All right, so we got our first look at the crossover character Morgan, and a lot of fans, and I mean a lot of fans, are asking about that season five similar attire, his outfit right there. It does look like they're purposefully trying to mislead us and make us think that that is Morgan after Eastman, but before he met up with Rick and gang at Alexandria. They did a nice job, even the black backpack, the jacket, the black backpack with that SWAT helmet shield mask thingamajig. Now, I believe in Season 5 it was lower on a backpack. That's not a big deal, but I believe some of the details are a little bit off. Now, as far as his jacket or the proof that this is after the events of Season 8, a lot of fans say his staff is not pointed, and then his look proves that this is... Uh, Morgan from season five. So they're messing around with the timeline a little bit. And I disagree. I think this is Morgan. In my eyes, it confirms this is Morgan after, whoops, spoiler, the events in uh, All Out War season eight. Because his spear, that's not proof. One end is pointy, the other end is rounded like that. We see that in different images. And this is, in fact, Eastman's spear because we could see the twisted grooves in the middle of the staff, and it looks exactly like it. Now, what also, in my opinion, is the biggest uh, evidence to prove this is after his jacket is ripped. Now, his jacket wasn't ripped in this image from Season 7, and it's the right arm. I don't believe that image is flipped. I'll admit it could be flipped. Hence, this looks like his right arm, but it's, his, it's really his left arm. I don't think that's flipped. I looked at a number of different images, and there's no rip on Morgan's arm. So I'm taking this as confirmation. This is definitely after the events in Season 8. And yes, that does rob fans of a lot of tension and suspense. Hopefully, he's not in any uh, moments or scenes coming up that requires us to worry about whether he's going to make it out alive. Because we already know. I mean, based off of these images, we know. If they hinted or made it seem like it was definitely going to be uh, something where they're playing around with the timeline a little, like maybe Morgan after Rick you know, found him when he was crazy. But keep in mind, that also wouldn't make much sense because he was lost. He was not you know, healthy around people. So they almost have no way else to go. No other way. No other choice but to make it Morgan after season eight, which would force the story to skip a lot of time. And that's another thing I see a lot of fans really frustrated with. And I'm talking about fans that are supporting Fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead is very divisive among fans. A lot of them don't like it. A lot of them like it. When you get something like this that forces the story, it, it erases or it doesn't erase but it modifies the character development. We don't see it. it it's off screen. Now, are we going to see characters like Alicia being a total badass and completely different? Is that something that's going to be exciting for you? Or is that something you're going to see and go, oh, well, how did she get this? Or why is this this? You know what I'm saying? We are jumping time. We have to. So aside from the character development, this brings up a huge question for fans. Why? Why would you want to speed up the time? I think it's a simple explanation. You guys can leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment box down below. But I think it's simple math here. They had a problem with ratings. They weren't as high as they wanted or needed them to be. So they decided to do this uh, gimmick crossover where they took a character and put him into the Fear the Walking Dead show. And because they're using Morgan, because they're doing it this way, they're forced to skip time. Story-wise, I don't think this is something that they would ever do unless they were forced to. That's the simple explanation that I think fits best. Now, you can keep the speculation going about Morgan and his outfit I think this is confirmation good enough for me personally. So I'm going to stay now until we see the show, almost definitely. This is Morgan after Season 8. Now, moving on to the characters. Fear the Walking Dead Season 4 is going to be a blend of new and old characters, which most likely means we're going to be getting a lot of deaths coming up in Season 4, which could be very exciting. Because keep in mind, 
we got new showrunners. I believe we have two new showrunners. When I read the article, they only mentioned one person, but I thought it was like brothers or two friends or something that were showrunners. Almost positive that there's two, but the article only mentions one. But will this new showrunner or showrunners, will they want the old cast back, the entirety of the old cast, Strand and Danny and so on and so on? I have a feeling they're going to trim it down a bit. So be prepared to have a few deaths happen. Now, timeline-wise, what the hell are, are they doing with this story? We could keep the speculation going, but for right now, I am sticking with Morgan's going to run into one or two of the members in the old group, and they're going to be separated from their family and friends, and they're going to tell their, their story to Morgan, and we'll probably see it in flashbacks, and they'll eventually evolve the different timelines together where they reunite with their family and introduce Morgan to the rest of the group that's alive. Let's say Alicia and Madison are together in which strand and they're doing something and Nick is alone, got separated, runs into Morgan. He tells Morgan about how they've been surviving. This event at the dam split them up and they, I don't know, how do you explain they're in Texas? We know they're in Texas because they said it's, it also takes place in Texas. I could be wrong on that. It has Texas on the truck. So just be prepared for some of your old characters to die and then new characters to be blended up. Like Garrett Dillahunt was added. I think he's a great character actor, has great charisma. He's a cool addition. I'm actually really excited to hear about that casting. Jenna Elfman, I think she is uh, she's a cutie. She's she's definitely got charisma, uh, but this is one's a hit or miss for me. If they do it right, I think it can work well, uh, but if they don't do it right, it, they're not going to do it right. Now, this actress here, I do not know who Maggie Grace is. She looks like an older version of the girl from Lost. So if this is the, I think she was like a snobby, snotty rich girl when we first met her on Lost. If this is the girl, I'm interested to see. I don't remember her being in anything else except for Lost. And I remember uh, kind of, you know, once in a while enjoying her performance on Lost. I don't think I was that thrilled with her character. It was kind of like one of those characters where you got annoyed with some decent character development. She might bring a good amount of charisma to the role. We'll have to wait and see. And then this last guy here, Kevin Zegers, I have no idea who that is. Uh, his face doesn't look familiar and the name doesn't ring a bell at all. So here's some of the new cast. And real quick before we end this, I did a big video talking about beyond the crossover and combining the, the two shows. Uh, I might do a more condensed version of that because that was a bigger discussion. But essentially, imagine imagine Oceanside on The Walking Dead uh, being a community where fear members are. Like, not fear in Oceanside, but imagine Oceanside, but instead of them, it's a fear characters in a fear community. They're close enough where they're not in every episode, you know what I mean, in The Walking Dead. However, they are guest stars in two episodes out of a season. You know what I mean? We don't need them a lot, so we'll see them. That's what I mean by beyond the crossover. One day down the line, one of these seasons, they could, if they're close enough in the story, they could have the characters going in and out. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let us know down in the comment box. And the last thing I just want to mention is now, there is a possibility that they will kill off Morgan in Fear the Walking Dead. And I just have to say, the thought of that, a couple fans keep bringing this up, the thought of killing off Morgan in Fear the Walking Dead infuriates me. There's something about it that I just cannot stand. It just, it, right, it goes right to my bones. I hate that idea. If they do it well, fine. They do it well, that's great. But I just want Morgan to go back to our community in The Walking Dead and die there on the main show. Die where he started. I do not want them to kill him in Fear the Walking Dead. Hell's no. And if you're wondering how they would bring him back, well, in the comic, I think it's okay to start speculating that Morgan has actually taken up comic book Michonne's storyline. And this is not a spoiler because uh, you can't do anything like this on the show, even if they were going to remix it somehow, because comic book Michonne went searching for her kids. She lost them during the outbreak. She went looking for them for that closure. And then on the show, 
Uh, Michonne, her situation with her kid is totally different. She had one kid. He died as a baby during the start of the outbreak. She still has the pets, which was like her boyfriend and her boyfriend's best friend. So there's no worries about spoilers here. But in the comic, she went off looking during a time skip and she came back. So I'm thinking there's a, a potential for Morgan to come back. If he does, when the group gets closer to where our group is, if they're traveling in the story, I tell you what, there's a really good potential that we will have guest stars going from one series to the other. And in the video previously where I mentioned that, a lot of fans say you can't do that unless you air them simultaneously. I have to disagree with this. With comic book characters, they do that, you know, when they do the crossovers. But that's because they they come together to fight a bad guy. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, look at Rick and gang need guns to fight this big bad Negan. They go to this community where the fear, fear characters live and they take their guns. And then they leave them there and the fear characters are not in the story. You see what I mean? Again, just picture Oceanside, but replace those with fear characters. And now you can see how they can bounce in and out of the different series. So fear people can guest in the Walking Dead main show and vice versa. So that can easily be done and keep them separate. You know what I mean? As long as you have somebody in there, hint, hint, orchestrating things. Keep in mind, Scott Gimple, Scott Gimple, let's add fuel to the fire here. He is now an executive producer on Fear the Walking Dead. What if that's why he is the executive? What if it's not to just get fans more interested in fear? What if it's to also make sure it is consistent Storyline wise, we already see they're willing to change stuff drastically in fear in order to force Walking Dead into fear. What do you think about Scott Gimple being the executive producer? Do you think it's just for hype, just for promotion? Or do you think they plan to intertwine the shows? Leave your thoughts, theories, opinions, and predictions down in that comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn.